to meet the break head coach Lee of KT Rolster coming up to the Korean Conference and be like, oh man, so close to SKT getting a loss <laughs> this season. <laughs> Of course, KT and SKT having a fun rivalry between the two organizations. And they haven't played each other yet, so that is the one thing that's been lacking about SKT's schedule is a real, I think, top four challenge. Yes. And here we go, Victor Band this time from KT, really respecting the power of that. Of course, Frozen, a very well-known mid laner. Someday's been playing a lot of top lane rise, I noticed, in Solo <laughs> Q, so that is a little bit interesting that we'd see that. Again, we are on 5.9, so the real the real power of Rise is not on this patch, it is on the next patch, but Someday has been preparing. Actually, a lot of players have been preparing for that. Most yeah. top laners in Korea have been running it quite heavily for um, obvious reasons. I am sure we can all assume, though, that everyone will ban it against CJ at the very least. <laughs> <laughs> Shy returning to the top lane Rise is probably nothing Well, Duke, that you too. Want to see. Duke, too. Remember oh, yeah, the Leopard Duke. days yeah. when he was on KT and they went to IEM and he just massacred that tournament on the bullets. <laughs> Single handed the wheel Rise. Very impressive, and Rek'Sai rounding out the bands at the very end. The LeBlanc ban against Frozen, very respectable. And the Evelyn ban, and then just taking away the Gragas. I mean, that leaves Sejuani, Lee Sin, kind of left open as the common factors for jungle. Interesting that they would ban the Eve here. I think Score has a lot of tools to use in this particular matchup. And so you don't necessarily need to focus on that. Of course, Frozen of Victor and Cassiopeia main. Don't want to give him those. And Hecarim is, the, is one of the champions that Someday could actually just take over the entire game with. So I, I think that those two bands at Someday are probably pretty wise. Put him on something that he's going to be tanky, not going to be killing your backline, which is something that he is particularly skilled at yes. with his teleports. He's really good at finding the flanks, getting the kill, and then sustaining throughout the fight. Oh, the Callista did get through, though. And the Alistair. Well, that is a dream combo you generally oh, don't man, get to see these days. we didn't even touch on that. So, Callista and Alistair. Wow. Well, that is, <laughs> I mean. That is harsh. Now, yeah, some teams, including KT, have let that pick go through. KT has answered Callista with Urgot and Braum. Mm -hmm. And won. Yeah, Urgot's a great pick against Callista. We've seen Samsung give up that Callista and play the the Varus and the Nami into it to shut it down. Now, they didn't win that game, but they were very close to winning that game against Jenner. Yeah. And they arguably should have won that game <laughs> <Yes>. against Jenner. <laughs> I would think so. I think many would agree with that statement. But, yeah, I mean, again, Callista, the thing is, Callista has a very obvious weakness. It's just that if you're super skilled with your micro control, then you can kind of dodge around that weakness. But if your team is super good, it's always that nice balance between individual mechanical skill and then team coordination. Who's going to trump yeah. who in that matchup? And the kill pressure is just so high on that champion. So it will be Rumble and Thresh, the Ignar special. Yeah. Of course, the Alistair helps a lot by the Callista side. So that's another threat to be aware of. I mean, you could be locked up forever with the double knockup post level six. And now hovering over the Lee Sin, that wouldn't be too surprising. Score also one of the few junglers who still look to the Lee Sin here and there. And especially when you're gonna have Alistair Callista, that Lee Sin can provide a lot of kill pressure, but no, Maokai will be selected instead, really saving that jungle pick until the very end. Huh. And Nagne is a very interesting player this year because there's not a lot of hype around this guy, but really, he has been so good, not only this season, but for pretty much the entirety of last season as well. Yes. Even when everything was going so badly for KT, most of that was on Arrow, Hachani, and Someday. Score and Nagne yeah. were working very well. Nagne's team fight positioning was good. His picks were good. He had a lot of... He's not the flashiest mid laner, but he's a mid laner who does his job extremely well. Yeah, I mean, Nagni, there was so much hype around him in the beginning. He got a solo kill against Faker at Worlds in Season 3, and then he just kind of fell off the map after making well, some too many risky plays, and now he's here as that consistent mid laner. And there's the Vayne Varus combo that I loathe so dearly. Oh, the KT special. This was actually played in China today. It was actually played in. In top lane, in, top lane yeah. in Europe, and then it was played in the jungle in China today. Well, you know, a lot of people talk about, in, in the professional scene, especially in high solo queue ranks, you know, about how Nocturne still has his well, power. Nocturne's great against Varus, but that will too. be the Sejuani yeah. switch over at the last second. 
I do think that's a little safer. The Basically, forces you, you, just, make you just fly in on the Varus, and then he tries to chain a corruption to you, and you spell shell it. And yep. then, then what does he do? <laughs> the answer is he dies. <laughs> Well, it is going to be that Varus in mid lane for Frozen. Meanwhile, Sejuani being chosen for score in the jungle. So really, really sturdy front line for K2 Roaster. Alistair, Sejuani, and Maokai. Sejuani's still a, a good pick and a much safer pick than Nocturne, yes. too. I, I love watching Nocturne, but the engage from Sejuani at that range. And I am not a lot of movement abilities here on this composition. KT, again, drafting a real powerhouse of a comp in this meta. How do they keep getting away with this, Chobra? Well, you know, I think a lot of it is, even back in the day, Someday does that to a lot of teams, because he has to, he's so strong in these pocket picks. Back in the day, even when Renekton, excuse me, was falling out of meta, he'd still bring it out, he'd still get those solo kills, he'd draw out those bans. He's one of those players where you kind of have to target his pocket picks, so you know at least what you're going up against in the meta picks. Very bizarre to see the Varus and Bane come out when the Szechuan is still on the table. Yeah. And I really, really dislike the Varus Bane combo because there's no synergy there. There's no siege. Yeah, I mean, they kind of do separate things. I mean, sure, Varus is ultimately can help lock people up. But oh, man. Just look at the think about there. this comp with Azir instead. I'm <laughs> dying, Chobra. <laughs> well, we'll find out as we jump right into game number one. I'm just going to pretend Frozen's playing Azir right now. <laughs> I close my eyes. When I open them, it'll be Azir. It's not Azir still. He's got some yellow on him. We can still pretend until he uses his first skill. <laughs> I think this is a great champion for Frozen, though. Uh, another Xerath player like GBM, very accurate in terms of long-range skill shots. I just want them to play Corky or play Azir here instead, depending on where they want to go. Yeah, I'm also... Varus's Chains of Corruption and Gravis' Explosive Cask. Not really the best synergy there. It's there, There's a lot of things that can go horribly wrong for LZIM while there are only a very few the situations Azir where it would have been well. so sick with this comp. So much protection from Vayne. Got some good uh, early and mid-game power off of the Rumble. Really nice comp. Unfortunately, Chobra, the reality we live in is one where Varus and Vayne is a combo again. By the way, I have yet to see this work. Jyn Air tried to do this. They lost really hard to KT. They lost to KT. I forgot. They lost. <laughs> KT already beat this. LZIF here to just prove that Jyn Air played it wrong. Meanwhile, KT just doing some review on how to win against this composition. Also, it's been played in China, and I'm pretty sure it hasn't won there, been, uh, had a victory there either. But haven't you heard whatever Faker plays is OP? He only <laughs> plays the most OP champions. I mean, Varus Mid. I played Varus Mid the day Faker brought it out, <laughs> you, and I won. You dirty bastard. <laughs> You're one of those people. Hey, man, carry the team 14, 3, and 6. Can't complain after that. But either way, I mean, the laning will be quiet. But again, it's when the ganks come in. And oh, look at this Fixer just hanging out in the enemy jungle. Taking like a little do. bit of a flame spitter to the face. And Tucson just trying to wait until the Alistair leaves. Uh, I'm pretty sure I am as happy they don't have to deal with a 2v2. We did see the lane swap come in while I was busy complaining about Varus. <laughs> and here we go. Fixer goes a little too deep, actually. Tucson baiting that out. And there is the Pulverize. And now. It's a big LCIM. delay, though. <laughs> Look at this. I mean, compare it. Score and Someday still, they're on their third camp right now, while Tucson and Apple have struggled just to get number two. Yeah, I think that's great by Fixer. Just sacrificing his health a little bit. He is Alistair at level two. He can get the heal if he needs. He has Relic Shield, too, so he's going to walk up there and proc yeah. that a couple times. Look at this. Ignar is here to get the experience. <laughs> that. Early level six at Thresh, really gonna help. Gotta get that box for the Callista. Yeah, Someday just continuing following right here. Happy where he is. Apple now in lane, still only level one. Wonder yeah. what they're gonna do with this. Uh, looks like we're just gonna see the recall on the TP. Not a lot of threat from Vayne early, so you can absolutely just go down there if you're Someday. Yeah. Break the freeze. Might as well go do that as you are at level two. Should have enough skills to deal with that. Little problem down in the bottom lane. And look at that. The helper squad coming through as well. 
Sejuani and Alistair are going to be joining, and Arrow left all by himself up in the top side. Nogne with some early pressure down here, and you know, we just haven't seen this Cassiopeia Varus lane go very well for the Varus. Yeah, it is kind of rough. Again, I, it's always worth mentioning that Varus doesn't have a long auto attack range. You can poke at range, but you can't do that until you really get your tier. You do that too many times early on, and you're just going to be stuck right at your tower until level four or five. Oh, is it dive time, Chobra? Well, it is a vein only at level three. Ignar's not there. They so haven't been spotted. Ignar's pretty sure just Aurora's now dead. Walking up now. Ignar is coming down though. He's making some headway. Tucson is really low, so he can't really help this. Roar just right there. There's a teleport coming in. Somebody decides, hey, we gotta back out. Their teammates are coming in. This suddenly turned into a 4v3, and the bodies are on the two members. Condemn backwards to make sure they pick up one kill onto someday. Fixer has really to flash over TV. into nowhere. Another CC chain coming in, and LZIM pick up two kills to kick things off. Yeah, it was too late to go for that gank when everyone was already in the bottom side uh, because that teleport coming through meant that they were going to have a big advantage, and now IM showing up, taking this quick dragon here. Wow, really making the best of their advantage right now. Getting quite a bit of a lead from that, already a 1,000 gold up. They'll get the first dragon stack. That means they can also get to five dragons pretty quickly. And with the poke wars, they'll be able to put out with Varus yeah. mid-game. Perfect for their composition. Yeah. They can really pressure. So Arrow deciding, all right, well, they're all bottom now. I might as well just shove it up, deny all the CS score hanging out, just to make sure that everything is all fine and quiet. Someday showing up in the top side, too. But he decides, all right, I'm going to have to teleport back down to bottom, I need to pick up this experience in CS. Yeah, especially after his lane opponent already grabbing a kill. He's going to have some time, though, uh, especially because he's not going to be in that 2v2. Even so, even with that kill, they don't want the Vayne in the Callista lane, so Apple heads into the top side instead. Yeah, that would be a little bit disastrous. We have Fixer hanging out next to Arrow once again. Just making sure, I mean, now with the early kill and assist that Apple got, should Ignar drop in the top lane, that could end up pretty poorly for Arrow. Nogne's backed off a bit in this mid lane, not pushing it quite so hard anymore. The junglers have been freed up out of dealing with the lane swap situation. Yeah. Playing a bit more conservatively. And Gragas, as easy you mentioned, Gragas is really good against Cassiopeia. Anyone who's a mobile, really, that body slam is so easy to hit at that point. Just the pink ward being cleared out by two sin. That should allow them to put down a ward in the river sometime soon so that Roar can feel a little safer uh, next to this Maokai. I mean, after the first couple items, Maokai doesn't have to feel too bad going up against Vayne. Especially with all that CC and your passive getting proud here and there. Yeah, now we are actually going to see a lane swap back in someday, calling this one as the wave was pushed into the turret. Now he's going to come into lane and pick that up in a little bit. Once it starts to reverse, Nagne and Frozen simply dueling it out. Mid lane right there. Nobody wanting to go back to, for their tier, particularly early, actually. Yeah, well, you know, for Nagne at the same time, he has quite a bit to gain by staying if the other person also doesn't get their tier, because you can stack up your passive. So you're still doing something pretty actively other than collecting gold. So, you know what, if you can just even out on the tiers, I think Nagne's okay with that. He also has a slight CS lead. He's actually just gonna go in and pick up the blue, too. We'll see how he makes use of that. It would be nice to have that tier while you have that blue buff. Someday taking some damage, trying to protect his pink ward. Not gonna happen, though. A lot of pink wards actually killed for Someday already. It's been a pretty big investment for him, as you can see. Two Doran's rings compared to the Shield, Amp Tome, and Ruby Crystal, thanks to that kill. But someday really having to play from behind in this one. And Nagne hits that first spike from the passive. And we'll get a little bit extra AP. Meanwhile, Bilgewater, Cutlass done for Roar, so yeah. on point with that kill and assist. Yeah, it's been done for a little bit right now. Arrow had some time to go back and get the BF sword. Roar should have enough money for a couple daggers or a recurve bow, something in that range, at least at the moment. So actually, this lane being pretty even in spite of the kill and assist onto Roar early on now. Oh, a nice hook onto Arrow, and there's the play backwards Lantern out, but they don't get an angle for the Condemned Arrow. Still a little scared, has to flash out. 
Maybe a little bit early on that flash right there. Ignar gets the lantern in to set up Roar. And you can see KT a little bit spooked right here. And that is not going to spell good things. Oh, and not oh, they. oh wow. Well, that, that really hurts for Frozen. And Frozen getting the double tears because he's sad. And then sold one back. <laughs> <laughs> How will I represent my fat, my sadness right now without being able to talk to my fans? I will go for the item symbolism. <laughs> well, I think we need more of that. Pro players who are watching, please. <laughs> when you're sad, I mean, you can refund it. Do, do other things, too. Find creative ways to express <laughs> yourself through refunds. There we go. A new meta in League of Legends to are spice you, things up. Are you about to style on your opponent? <laughs> Buy a Sword of the Occult and then refund it. <laughs> That's the trash talking that you can do to your fans. Oh, man. That would be pretty good. Double Soul Stealer. <laughs> Double the stacks. All the AP. Well, Ignar just going to go home as the lane freezes up right here in the middle. Uh, Score and Fix are going to show up, though, alongside Arrow, and they haven't been seen. Roar all alone right now, and there's the Fates calling and the knock-up and the pulverize and the headbutt back. Hello, Roar, you have nowhere to go. And unfortunately, Score doesn't get the assist, but it doesn't matter because Callista has now started the pain train with the first kill. Wow, that is such a monumental kill, especially after Roar had just come back into lane with the recurve bow. It's a lot that's going to be denied. No dragon to be taken, but they still close the gold gap to within just a couple of hundred, thanks to especially the CS lead in the middle lane. Yeah, Arrow having a slight one as well, making up for Someday's deficit up top. So this is all of a sudden become a very close game again after a failed dive and the lack of respect for that teleport the top side. Nagne has his level two boots on top of the tier. He is so fast right now. Frozen doesn't have that blue buff. This hurts a lot for Frozen's Varus. Just doesn't have an answer to this lane and the CS lead will continue to grow for Nagne as he single-handedly zones out Frozen. And look at his build too, going for the early Sork shoes. So, well, right as I say that, he, <laughs> as he does not dodge a piercing arrow, but it does give him more of a likelihood of dodging a piercing arrow like that. Yeah, I mean, he's just dancing in and out of lane, making sure he dodges a lot of those. I mean, I think that was the first one he got hit while we were watching. And then denying that CS, eventually Varus pushes up and uses all his skills, but that means he's low on mana. I mean, look at his mana bar on the side. Without that blue buff, the tier hasn't been stacked just yet, but Score finds Ignar. There's the Glacial Prison in the flash for a headbutt and the Pulverize, but they don't have the damage onto Ignar just yet. Teleport coming in from Someday. And there's the lantern just in the middle of the river as Ignar had to flash out of that fight. Yeah, but Someday cancels his. Meanwhile, Apple actually follows through. Dragon is live, however, so they can convert this into an objective. Yeah, LZIM had the timer on this dragon. Now Nagni's gonna show up, though. He's pretty scary. Tusa takes a lot of damage. Oh, that is a lot of damage. Yeah, Frozen trying to poke out. He does have half of his mana available, and it looks like LZIM will be able to secure this. Nagni, the only one who was confident enough to be able to go in, so they're just gonna back out. Wow, I, another mistake from KT. You didn't follow that one up. Oh, Whoa, and the flash forward, and there's the cleanse, but Frozen still gets caught by score. Nagne caught a little bit more by the equalizer, though, as Arrow comes in. Fates call with Fixer getting the knockup, but Tucson flashes out, and the kill is denied as Arrow just has to bounce back out with some back steps here. Score taking another piercing shot to the face, but the flame spitter not doing enough damage just yet from wow. Apple. The re-engage kills two members of KT as they get very aggressive with no ultimate from score to help knock or to keep, to keep people down at all. Also no ult from Fixer. So KT looking very disjointed today on some of these engagements. I mean, Frozen hits a good chain of corruption. That's gonna be cleansed, however, and then the equalizer's still up. That's an easy kill. And then now we see Arrow trying to hop through and get onto Tucson, but Tucson flashes out of range for the E, the Rend, yeah. and that's no kill. Meanwhile, Frozen will take out Alistar. Well, really well played by LZIM, and I mean, Nagne flashing forward for that was worth a shot, because Frozen was just about to return to lane. He was trying to catch him off guard with a surprise. Didn't happen, though. Well, during that tussle, Someday takes out the top turret, so they actually maintain okay. some 
semblance of even gold. Roar, is he going to get surprised right here? There is no ward in that brush. He knows something's up. Something hasn't been seen. Oh, but he walks right back into the tower and score comes in. There's the flash. Glacial Prison and the Lantern, he takes it right as the headbutt comes in. Someday. Down in the bottom side as well. No twisted advance. Now the turret goes down. But that actually is a gold advantage for KT Rolster. They're down in dragons, up in towers, up in gold. All right, so KT's still in this. And if they can clean up their fights a little bit, should still be anyone's game. But the way the fights have been going so far, LCIM shouldn't feel too bad about the gold being somewhat even right now. Well, I don't know about that. This Varus has a very particular power spike that he has to use. Rumble may have some trouble in the late game against a Maokai and a Sejuani <laughs> and an Alistair. Well, someday such a smart player. He sees that huge wave. The tower's at half health, and he suspects, all right, well, LZIM, if they're smart, they're going to want to try to just gank me as I get greedy for this minion wave. So checks with the sapling, and the enemies clear it out. So he just then walks forward for that game with his teammates enough time to catch up. Scuttle Crab going to two, sand in front of the Baron Pit. Someday now just hanging out on the top side of the map, score clearing out a ward in mid, allowing Nogne some more free movement in and out of the lane. Tucson been a lot better this game overall in terms of that early impact. Yeah, some of it was just counter ganking. Uh, at the bottom tower when the dive came through, but he was in the right side of the jungle at the right time. Yeah, well, some people make their careers off of counter ganking like Dandy, so yes. <laughs> if that's your specialty, all power to you. Work on that even more. And Arrow and Fixer down in the bottom, just farming up. Really want that. Close to get big. Already has that Bloodthirster. Roar now shows up in the top lane alongside Apple. They're just trying to shove this in as Ignar and Tucson keep someday at bay. Things going down, Apple decides to go back home. They wants to make sure he doesn't miss out on anything in the bottom side of the map. And Roar will single-handedly take this turret down with the pressure from Ignar and Tucson. And that's just a great timing. Go ahead while the dragon's down, push out the top side, try and get that gold advantage back while Apple recalls and drops his equalizer to prevent any damage at all on the tier two. Yeah. And now you've got two minutes to set up for that dragon. Very clean play from IM. Yeah, Score is still trying to take advantage of his jungle prowess over Tucson, stealing that red buff. Tucson's going to find the enemy ward. They know where he is. He's going to take the long way around. We'll see where Tucson and Ignar go. They're very scared of KT right now. And oh boy. Are they going to throw a, a barrel into that brush? Is the question. Oh, Tucson, oh he's just going to go ahead and start the Raptors. And KT lost <laughs> sight of them. They're like, where'd he go? Oh. KT there just has is. to be patient. Eventually, they're going to walk up to this dragon. Yeah, someone has to. Oh, they're going to leave right as Tucson finishes the Raptors, though. Wow, I think they should have just committed for that. I, I really think they could have. Where are they going to go? I mean, I guess they felt that they need to set up in bottom, but they're going to walk all the way around anyway. Apple is there, so it is a three-man push. Uh, so they were, I guess, a little bit more concerned about that. Also, maybe the backup coming up from the bottom side with the Lantern. Either way, they give up on that potential kill, and KT just here to clear out this big wave in the bottom side. The turret's still at over half health, so that's good news for KT. They can rest assured that that won't be going away anytime soon unless they get aced or something drastic like that at the next round fight. Yeah, still 40 seconds to go, so everyone headed home to push out minion waves and to make a major purchase. Arrow actually not going for the hurricane, gets a zeal All right. for the static shiv, one would suppose. I would think so. I mean, sure, you have the Cassiopeia, but... I think you want the immediate wave clear here. Yes. You're looking just to get over the Varus power spike, and then you're going to be in good shape as a team. So get the static shift, make sure they can't take too many towers, and work from there. Meanwhile, everyone fanned out except for Apple right now. Apple's TP available. Now Maokai, he wants to make a play, or at least to start this dragon and then TP back up into the top side if he has to. Yeah, meanwhile, Apple choosing to farm first, teleport after into the fight. Somebody's already here, just helping get some vision with the saplings too, and also just distracting LZIM a little bit. Now, you do have Kalista for KT, so that's some extra objective power. I'm gonna focus down the Scuttlecraft first. 
And they're just gonna start to take that dragon. Nagne here on the side. He actually gets caught by the Destinies. There's the play. Yes, he uses Cleanse immediately to flash out, but Roar is hungry for the kill. There's an all oh, Roar thought he dodged. The petrifying gaze, but Nogni waiting one second. Meanwhile, KT someday getting burned down by that Flamesmitter. What happened here? You have to use the Glacial Prison to run away, and Arrow just simply cannot do anything. Oh, Frozen with the double kill on the Piercing Arrow, using Fate's Call to help fix her escape, but he's not going to go any further as Roar gets the Condemn, picks up the kill, retreats, and LZIM talking about the power spike. Here it is. Yeah, they, well, it's not even that bad yet, Chobra. It's going to get worse. Uh, with this Varus, because the Muramana isn't completed yet, neither is the Last Whisper. So they're not even really a maximum power. But KT, they lost so hard in the early game, and they made so many mistakes that there was there's already three Dragons down before oh, 20 wow. minutes. And that means they sort of have to fight some of these engagements. And that's perfect for, for LZIM here. Yeah, Nogne got a little greedy with the harass. And I love him faking out Roar here, though, because he yeah. turns around <laughs> to, put down, to put down the poison, which prompts him to turn back. And so he actually does mind game a little bit with those abilities. Yeah. But in the meantime, the Equalizer has already owned the rest of his team. Oh. And one sniper, not only a double kill, but a huge chunk out of Arrow as well. Yeah, and Fixer sacrificing himself to allow Arrow to escape. Also a really good equalizer from Apple across the entrance to the Dragon Pit. That forced them to take some damage as he retreated. Somebody was still caught taking the Dragon damage. KT just didn't have an answer for that fight. Yep, and now inching closer to the Last Whisper is Frozen. Oh man, yep. well all the advantage that Nogane had, stealing that blue buff. Having that CS advantage, sure, you still have the CS advantage, but Frozen can now poke you out since he has his own blue buff this time around. So silly from KT. They just had to play safe in this scenario early on and uh, patiently outscaled. Instead, they go for some big plays without enough knowledge on several occasions, play that risky style, and now it's going to be very difficult for them to win this one as IM's composition really comes into its own, and this vein has been so accelerated this game. Yes. Uh, two, one, and three, as I played over in King. Already has the zeal. And a null magic mental to help with the MR. Most likely gonna lead into that QSS as you took summer heal for the main. Descent is not gonna hit from Ignar, but that's all right. Still have three members here. We're just gonna poke down the tower a little bit and then retreat. Ignar 1 0 and 6 on his signature champion. Tucson, meanwhile, is going to run into three people and scare them away. Well, so difficult to stop the siege now. At least they can 4 1 with this vein pretty effectively, considering how far along the vein is this early in the game. She should be able to outduel someone. In fact, they really should send her into the Maokai lane right now and have her sort of deal with someday. Oh, she was boarding back, but they decide to go for the red buff as Apple goes up to the top lane, just going to soak up that XP and gold. So for now, Apple will clear out the top lane, but where will Vayne go afterwards? We'll see if they swap positions out in the top lane, see if uh, Roar can punish Someday a little bit more for being delayed. Someday does have his parts of the Frozen Heart, though. He realized yeah, after he the just Spectre's Gal, he needs to build against this Vayne. And the Varus. And the Varus, and oh. that's extremely important. Well, what is he going to do, though? He doesn't have good engage capability. No Righteous Glory to quickly and efficiently deal with Frozen's Varus. Now he's going to go back, stay a step ahead with the Last Whisper. Two Armor Pen items to a non-completed, or incomplete, one might say the word is, <laughs> Frozen Heart from Someday. Not a lot of armor on score either. It is going to be very hard for them to get back into this one. They have to land like perfect ultimates. Someday has to find his way into the back line. Yeah, a lot of that can be set up with Fixer, of course, especially with Arrow helping him out with Fate's Call, but that's so hard to set up. And it needs to be so perfect for Someday and score. I mean, just one of them have to hit their ultimates completely perfectly, and then Someday can follow through. Oh, here we go. Static shift complete. Now for Arrow. That may give them a bit more breathing room. 
LZIM, though, rapidly approaching their fourth dragon stack, and that will mean that they have a, a fifth dragon up for grabs at about 31 minutes into this game. Yeah, that's pretty early, and that's very scary. Varus 2 0 and 3 has that last whisper. I built it the last time he went back, and now still stacking up on that mana mute. And Phantom Dance is complete for Roar, so any 1v1 scenario, Roar will be pretty happy to jump right into. Yeah, Roar can split push incredibly well right now. Well, dragging up in 50. Seven seconds, so we are going to see LCIM retreat, make sure that they can secure all the vision they can. Going to go ahead and take that skull crab now, so it's alive for about 10 more seconds, 20 more seconds after the dragon spawns. Meanwhile, KT saying, all right, well, if you're going to go to the bottom side, they can do the top side. Yeah, they have the Callista, so they're trying to force this. Cassio be a Callista, they absolutely could do a 25-minute Baron in a short time window, so that's what they're going to try and threaten. This is really smart. Yeah, and KT, of course, known even since the Roaster B days of sneaking out Baron. So they know how this trade works. They've been in this scenario so many times, and they've succeeded in doing so a number of times, saying, go for the Dragon, we'll take the Baron, and then we'll actually probably shove you out and take at least one turret here in mid. Here's a Teleport from Someday. First, just to at least group up. His home guard is there. It's not going to be the main use, though, of that Teleport. And Arrow is sticking just far behind. Not going to get spotted by the Scrying Orb. Score. Steps outside, says hello. Now Fixer's still in that brush. And they're going to find Tucson. Tucson's staying up quite a far away. And Score just Arctic Assault over the wall. He gets to slow down onto Tucson. Tucson has to use Explosive Cast, but here comes. Oh, Fixer gets knocked by a bag. The Condemn and Roar and Frozen doing double duty damage onto Fixer. Unbreakable wall. And then the Fates call. Oh, the Equalizer lands. And there's the Chain of Corruption. Arrow taking so much damage. He goes down to a flash over the wall from Apple with the Flame Spitter on. Roar continuing to chase with the Summoner heal, trying to get the damage down onto Nogni, but there's the Glacial Prison. That's going to be the end of the chase for Roar. Apple still wants this kill, but Frozen can't get over the Miasma pool, and Apple not going to get the Harpoon over the wall. LZIM, they want these kills, but it's looking a little risky. Now, Nogni has been separated. One snipe, not going to happen. And there we go, Ignar just picks it up. Not going to take any risk where Nogni still does a lot of damage. But critically, in that trade, there's still no dragon taken. Yes. They're delaying the fourth and therefore the fifth dragon stack from LZIM. Yeah, it wasn't a great trade for them. One for two. But they delayed this game. And that's what they need to do right now is extend this game. So it was a good threat on the, on the Baron. Fixer comes in, flash pulverizes to try and keep him out of the fight. Fox going to be used to zone out someday and score. Nagde. And Arrow get nailed by the Chain of Corruption. Nice ult from Frozen to keep them there. And then there's the flash after the Petrifying Gaze. Score's gonna turn this one around though. And look at this, KT actually may get this Dragon. That would be huge. Yeah, Arrow's already been working on it. Lots of basic attacks in there. And Tucson goes in with his Whistle Cask and Varus is actually gonna steal it. Frozen gets the fourth Dragon for LZIM. And Apple gets the kill onto somebody. Will I am just go for the Baron here? That rend left the Baron with like 30 HP. Oh man. It was so incredibly close. Scored. Oh wow, look at that equalizer at the chain of crush and the body slam. It's just a disaster for KT. They have to use Face Call to escape. That's gonna be the tier two in mid. And LZIM, the Baron would be nice, but they can keep pushing this. They still have 15 seconds until someday comes back out. All five members healthy for LZIM. Yeah, that's gonna be an inhibitor for sure. And they really need this right now. Take it while you're strong. They have such a good lead. I am in a very nice place and showing the power of that Rumble and Varus wow. ultimate combo. Good setup. Yeah, really well done. As soon as the slow goes down for the Equalizer, Frozen is going right ahead for the Chain of Corruption. And now, the Blade of the Ruin came from Roar and of course quite a few other damage items from everyone else. Baron will just get melted by five members of LZIM. We get the Baron 2 on top of four Dragon Stacks now here at 28 minutes into the first game. Well, this is a much better showing from Incredible Miracle than we've seen in the past. Finally actually hitting a power spike pretty well in this game, pushing their advantage more decisively and controlling objectives instead of just idly wandering around the map, not knowing what to go for. Yeah, I mean, 
3-0-7 score for Frozen. And sure, Roars died two times, but two and four in terms of kills and assists, and he's been doing a lot. He missed Pushing a little bit, chased basically too far twice there, but still doing lots of damage with the early lead he got in the bottom lane. Here comes Roar. Nobody really going to be able to deal with him at this stage. Yeah, not 1v1 at the very least. And actually, it's going to be a 5v1 against Score if he doesn't watch out. Instead of going for the split push, deciding, all right, well, we're super strong right now. Let's just group up. Let's shove down as many towers as we can rather than just doing overall damage across the map. I like this from LCIM. The towers melt so quickly with both Varus and Roar. Nagane trying to get some damage down to Tucson, but he's got to watch out. LZIM could jump into the fight in a second with the explosive cast, with the equalizer, with the death sentence. Now Arrow does have his ultimate. So if they really need to, LZIM can force, or rather KT can force him off the tower, but Arrow has to flash out. The equalizer comes in. There's an explosive cast can actually knocks him out of the piercing arrow from Frozen. But either way, they are going to send Arrow all the way back to base, get this second inhibitor. Yeah, it doesn't really matter if you kill him at that point. You just have to force your way through the objective. Now you've got your sights set on that inhibitor number three. No dragon for another couple of minutes, so you might as well take tier two if you can. Minion wave is not really pushed to your advantage, though. It may take a little bit. Yeah, it's, yeah they're going to have to actually go back quite far to make sure that the minions catch up to with that Baron buff. So KT should have time to regroup around the top tier two. Sure it, but they are losing a lot in their jungle. And look at this phage coming out for Roar. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's going to be a Trinity Force or a Black Cleaver. Yeah, it could be either or, especially with the new Cleaver. Could work out well. Of course, now and then we've seen the Trinity Force come out in the veins in the old days. Still a good item, especially on late game vein. Yeah, I mean, you tumble so often that you can really proc that. And of course, the movement speed on hit and in general helps a lot. That's really the biggest thing. Any extra movement speed you can get for vein and attack speed is going to matter quite a bit in your ability to micro around the team fights. And look at the poke coming in. Arrow gets chunked down to three quarters health. And KT just can't take that chance. Baron buff still available for LZIM. Explosives cash just being used just in case. They're not going to find it, but it is it's on a short cooldown. And that shoves down KT behind their own turret. And Baron buff just ended though, so Roar has to watch out. He doesn't have the safety of the empowered minions in front of him. And all right, well, Baron is down. So KT, if they want to do something, they kind of have to right now, because otherwise their other lanes will just keep pushing up and eventually they'll either lose the Nexus turret or an inhibitor. And look at all the minions pushing up from the bottom lane, still marching in through the mid lane. Yeah, there's just nothing you can do. Now, both Ferris and Vayne have relatively shorter auto attack ranges, so it's not as easy for them to go in for one no, hit each No, but it's time. just a patient game as yes. the super minions move forward. And considering they're all empowering each other with those auras right now, you have to go back and deal with them. Yeah, and there we go. Okay, that's just going to be the Nexus turret being sacrificed all by right. KT. And the minions are still there. I mean, the super minions keep coming in. KT can't let that happen again. They're going to lose the second one if they don't watch out. So now they send two people out. They did shove out the last wave from LZIM, so LZIM can't get a free tier two or wow, inhibitor turret. Wow, recall delayed right there. That may... See how long they can prevent recalls, because that could actually cause KT to get a dragon. Yeah, I wonder if LZIM being aware of this will try to come back. Well, Ignar actually did complete his port back, so he's going to go in first, get that vision at the dragon pit. Very Still smart. Still really delayed from Varus and Vayne, so they're not even going to have a chance to go back. They simply have to go for this dragon without a recall. All right, I mean, they were doing quite a bit of damage, but like you said, they are missing out on optimizing their goal. Nice death sentence over the wall, and there's the chain of corruption. Uh, they're not going to get too much damage on the score, but he has to flash out. That means enemy jungler, jungler missing. And that should be the dragon for LZIM, a fifth stack. And look at this. I mean, this is the team a lot of people were expecting to see after their qualifier performance. I was showing up today, although a lot of early game mistakes made by KT. Very true. Really looking not together today. Uh, questionable calls against the composition that LZIM was running, where if you start that snowball, you better be prepared to deal with it. And K2 
KT simply weren't. And having this early of a fifth dragon, it, it pretty much all went right for IM. And to their credit, they've they've absolutely pushed that advantage. Well, right. I mean, this is the we talked about it with Samsung too, but IM had similar problems where they never really found ways to finish, even if they got some more nice early games. Also, they used to lack a lot of the laning power, especially in the top lane with Lilac. That's changed quite a bit. And like you said, they're pressing every advantage they do have, even if it's coming from mistakes of the KT players. Red buff was secured by Arrow with the rent. And now we will see the inhibitor is back up, so IM can't stand to see that. They want to knock it back down, but Baron is up in 50 seconds. So IM has to be careful on how much they commit to this death sentence. Missing for now. Be back up in about seven seconds. Meanwhile, a flash body slam onto Arrow. They really want to keep that Kalista locked down, but I think Tucson is taking a little bit more damage than he expected to. Roar, meanwhile, is now free to do damage. It flashes forward, gets not the kill onto Arrow just yet. Tucson chasing after. There it is, the damage over time from the red buff. A double kill for Roar. And four members down. Meanwhile, as Apple picked up a double kill on the bottom side of the screen. And that's going to be a 35-minute game in favor of LZIM. Well, a surprising upset in our first game of this series. Wow. I am looking a lot stronger than we had suspected previously. Can they hold it out through the rest of this best of three? KT needs to really shore up their early game, not play in such a cavalier manner against this IM squad that was very punishing to their mistakes. Yeah, 3 0 10 for Frozen Unbarrassed. 1 0 13 for Tucson in the jungle. Tucson did step it up quite a bit compared to his previous games, was a little bit more aggressive and just much more present around the map. Yeah, much more present is really, I think, the big factor there. Having a better read on where score and the enemy team was going to be.